Happy Saturday and welcome to the Great Age Movement at Home Lab Series in partnership with the Health Museum. And today I'm here with Andrew the Dennis. Hey guys, how's it going? And Andrew's been with us uh, season after season. Yep, Can you believe we're already in season three? Amazing. We feel like part of spring cleaning is also uh, addressing oral care in your mouth. And Dennis, uh, Dennis are probably the best person to talk to Absolutely. regarding this. Absolutely. So uh, tell us what's been happening since last spring when you were here telling us about uh, dental care. Sure. So last year I was in Nashville for my residency. You came and visited me and we spoke a bit about dental care. Um, this year I'm back in Houston and I'm working at two offices. One is in the Heights and then the other is in Clear Lake. Okay, and you were doing a residency, right? Correct. And what was it about? Um, advanced education in general dentistry. So I learned a little bit more than, you know, the standard education about, you know, gum health and teeth health and, you know, restoring smiles. Okay, great. Uh, awesome. Well, let's get started and start asking sure. some questions uh, that audience sometimes think about. Uh, what is the most important advice you can give somebody regarding oral care and hygiene? Sure, so the absolute most important thing is to brush twice a day and floss once a day. It's, you know, dentists tell you that growing up, you know, you hear that over and over and over from everyone, but that really is the most important thing that we can do to keep our mouths clean and healthy. Gotcha, and so when you're looking at mouths all day long, and I'm, sure. probably, I'm probably thinking you see tons of them. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> what do you notice based on your advice that people are not doing? So, when I notice something and I ask people questions of, you know, do you brush twice a day? Do you floss once a day? A lot of times people say yes, but they may not be doing it correctly. Gotcha. So or they're not doing it. Or they're not doing it. <laughs> Regularly. <laughs> right, yes. But it's very important to, you know, make it a habit, do it every day, because that's the only way that everything stays healthy. Gotcha. And I think uh, with flossing, I mean, obviously it's to remove uh, food particles. But doesn't it like stimulate the gums? It stimulates the gums, it keeps everything healthy. And if you think about your teeth, they're very tied together, but food can still get up and under. Yes. So when you brush your teeth, the bristles aren't able to get in between the teeth. Gotcha. So we have to go up and under the teeth and pull out the food. And it seems simple. I think oftentimes yeah. after we brush our teeth, we think we've it's removed, done. removed sure. everything, but sure. without that flossing, you really don't have that like double check. Sure. You miss, you actually miss 30% of your, the surfaces of your teeth if you don't floss. Gotcha. Now, uh, outside of flossing, uh, I'm sure there's other tools you can use to yes. uh, clean, your, clean your teeth. What uh, yes. do you use most common? I think you use this actually in the dental office too. Sure. Yeah. So we actually recommend a water pick, especially for seniors that may have a harder time getting up in under areas. Um, especially if you have a bridge, it's a very nice tool to be able to get up under there and, you know, really, really clean it with water and kind of jet propulsion food out of under areas. Yeah, the ex extra pressure really yeah. pushes it through. Fantastic. Okay, so we basically kind of covered just brushing and flossing. Sure. Now, uh, I'm sure there's a, a, an impact on how you, say, brush your teeth, right? Sure, yeah. A lot of people, I know my dentist told me that on the surface of my teeth, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the actual top surface, not the sides, yeah. uh, I'm brushing way too hard. Sure, yeah, that's and a good point. He's saying I'm wearing down one side versus another. That is true. And also, uh, we have a tendency to, just like your left hand, your right hand, we choose a side to chew on yep. instead of balancing out the two. And he says that also helps wear teeth down. Absolutely. So I was a little Good surprised point. by that at yeah. my last dental visit. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> so uh, so what, what do you say about technique? So I agree. You, you, the proper technique I'm glad you asked is to use preferably an electric toothbrush and you go gently. You don't want to press hard. I used to do the same thing and actually wore some of my teeth down. So you don't want to press hard because you can rub away some of your teeth. So, so I, I recommend a soft bristle toothbrush okay. that's electric and you go in slow circles and you don't press hard. That's right. And yep. so essentially with we, uh, I use the electric toothbrush, mm -hmm. but I still kind of push it to go faster, sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you're supposed to just be calm and let it no, take over just, <laughs> and move. But, it's, you know, it's hard to do it perfectly. Yeah, because you're always in a hurry, right? Sure. <laughs> um, Okay, so that technique, and so on the sides as well, you're using the circular motion? Correct, which is yeah. what I think most people 
uh, a do. Sure. Okay. And, and you want to make sure that you get all surfaces. So if you think about teeth, there's the outside that faces your cheek, yep. the top, and then the inside. And that's the areas that we can brush. So you want to make sure you're getting all three planes and then you want to be able to, fl you want to floss to make sure you get the in-between parts too. Gotcha. So now you're floss, I mean, you're brushing your teeth, mm -hmm. but what about the gums? You touch the gums? Yes. Because they're, Very is there like a little space uh, that food can get into Absolutely. that's along the edge of the tooth? Absolutely. The Great question. So the way your teeth and gums sit, your gums kind of are angled at an angle like that. Mm -hmm. So food can get actually get caught down there. Okay. So you want to feel your toothbrush kind of sweep on the side of your gums. And that's, because yes. that's where I see the biggest area that people miss is right along the gum line. Now when they do and food does build up in that part, sure. Uh, now you have uh, two opportunities of, of some kind of yeah. infection, right? Exactly. Like you can get, what is it? Gingival. So So you can get gingivitis is how it starts. So. Gingivitis is when, and I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, and you know, most of the population that sometimes has gingivitis, it's when the plaque gets stuck on your gums and it gets really irritated and red and really angry. And, you know, you touch it, you brush, and you start bleeding. Um, if you leave that for too long, the plaque can actually calcify, mm -hmm. and that actually causes destruction of your gums and bone. Oh, wow. So, uh, that's interesting. Now, plaque, uh, can you just explain? I, mean, sure, I, think, I think it's good for people to be refreshed on yeah. the basics. You sure. know? We think we know, but if when somebody like fleshes it out, it makes yeah, you more sense that. and you're more conscientious of it. So yeah. uh, tell us how plaque forms on your teeth. Sure. So plaque is kind of a combination of food and bacterium that are in your mouth. Okay. And it adheres to your tooth. So it, it really clings on and it actually, there's a whole pathway of bacteria that line up to each other and kind of cling on. So mm -hmm. you, you really have to be conscious about getting plaque off. Now, is it the bacteria that's uh, secreting something that adheres the food particle exactly. to the tooth? That is very, that's true. Oh. So that, that's what happens and then it actually breaks down the sugars in your food and then that can also cause cavities. So you can have a, you can have, kind of have a double whammy of, you know, cavities and, and gum disease. Gotcha. Yeah. That works. He's explaining this because it will make more sense why you should <laughs> brush twice a day and, and floss once a day. Exactly. So um, that's, that's a good answer. Uh, <laughs> what if I don't have any teeth? So if you don't have any teeth, should you still clean? I get this question all the time. Yeah. Most people don't think you should. You absolutely should because yeah. you can still get infections. Yeah. So as we wear dentures, you know, people think I'm, you know, I'm done, I can just use my denture, but your dentures can actually harbor a lot of bacteria and a lot of food and they can get caked onto it. Yeah. And that can give you mouth infections that can lead to some really, you know, hard times. So let me ask you this, because we're assuming you're doing the full dentures. Now, if you're missing one tooth sure. or several teeth, there's going to be a space and uh, what, what is the gums like after teeth are gone? Yeah, that's does a good it, question. Does it close over like scabs or? So it does. It, it, your gum actually is a very resilient tissue. So it actually, if you lose a tooth, it does close over it, but it also compromises the, the two teeth in between. Okay. On the other side, rather. So you, you know, if you lose a tooth, you still, you want to be extra careful of keeping those spaces clean because they also can trap more food because you're, you're kind of along the prep. Yeah. They yeah. Oh, okay. Now, if you lose, this is just a side question. Sure. If you lose a tooth or two uh, and you don't have the supporting teeth uh, next to it, mm -hmm. do those teeth start to shift towards they do. the hole? Yeah, so that's a that's a really good question. So teeth are always moving. I'm asking a lot of good questions. Today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So teeth actually constantly move throughout your life. You can... Yeah. The only way that you can prevent it is to wear retainers, but if we lose a tooth, it quickens the motions because they try. What teeth try to do is go grow until they have contact with another tooth. Uh, so if you lose a tooth, and this is a good point as well, if you lose a tooth on the bottom or top, yeah, and you have the tooth opposite of it, that tooth is going to grow way out, and it's going to find from the opposite side into the space. It's going to try to find something that'll make it stop. Uh, 
So it's really important, you know, to get checkups and if you lose a tooth, make sure everything's stable. Would that lift the root up and then you'll have yep. more of, I didn't know exactly, that. Yes. That's interesting. Yep. So it almost needs that contact and pressure. Absolutely. You have to keep it, keep it in line. Yeah. Oh, interesting. All right. Let me see my other questions. Mm -hmm. I should have them memorized. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you have dentures, sure. and you know we see the poly 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 grip poly grip yeah. commercials. No, the grip is to hold it, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the cleaner poly dent. Yeah, so yeah, you can use poly dent if you have if you have dentures, partials or full dentures. Yeah. You can place it in a solution of you know what is tablet that? and water. It's just a cleaning agent. It looks like an Alka Seltzer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a cleaning agent, but yeah. it does the same thing as your your toothpaste. So I, I wouldn't necessarily use toothpaste. I think the best the best way, and this is goes to what we were talking about earlier, to clean your mouth while you have dentures and your dentures, get a warm wash rag with some dish soap, mm -hmm. very cheap. Rub it on the inside of your denture every night. Okay. Clean it out and rinse it out. Dish soap. Yep. Okay. Works very well. And then as far as your mouth, you want to clean your gums because, like I said, a lot of things can happen. So just get a really soft wet rags like warm wet rag and just wipe your gums okay. and, it, and it does wonders it really prevents a lot of issues and just just a warm cloth for your Correct. gums yep. got it now uh does it help any to do also like the uh mouthwash and stuff does that mouth help with killing bacteria and germs <clears throat> like it says it, it's okay mouthwash yeah. isn't my favorite um it's more for freshening the breath oh. you know you the, the idea is you know brushing and flossing does it all and then Mouthwash is kind of, you know, there to help you, and you know, if you yeah. need, need it's a like fresh perfume. Breath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it does say it kills germs, and it kills specific ones, like that, the ones that That's, cause halitosis, the bad breath. Uh, so it's, it's more of a wide variety bacteria killer, so the issue with mouthwash is it can kill good bacteria as well. Okay. There's, like, I've been reading quite a bit about this lately, and, you know, it can actually harm your good, because you have good bacteria in your mouth that you need to... Yeah you know, break down food and, you know, help your microbiome. Um, so you really, you know, want to, want to keep everything in check. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, a, that's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go on to, we, we talked about ways of cleaning your mouth mm -hmm. and there are just a, I mean, it feels like the things you would go to the dentist for are now built into the toothpaste. Like, teeth whitener and yeah sure uh, uh what's the other thing they have in there there's like the, you, you always see it on the box plus this plus that oh fluoride and, fluoride yeah. well fluoride is pretty standard but it's sure, like sure. the teeth whitener there's the uh extra enamel protection oh yeah, yeah yeah uh i mean is that all true oh yeah i mean yeah i i think you know, used over time right sure Just, sure yeah. sure it, you have to use it over time and you know i i do think those things help but uh, you know the if you're brushing and flossing, that's going to be your best, you know, your best thing. A lot of people come in and say, oh, well, I use, you know, this once a week. And I know I brush like maybe once every few days, but I use this, but you know, yeah, the best thing is, you know, just whatever you use is okay and just keep it a habit. So going to like the teeth whitening, the reason why I asked that is sure. because occasionally I'll buy those Crest strips. Yeah. I don't, I can't remember if it's 10 days or 12 days you do sure. it. And in the, in the package, it gives you, you wear it for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have like the one you just use routinely. Mm -hmm. And then they give you a couple that are like super acting. Like it just happens like quickly yeah, yeah, yeah. and increase, uh, like it improves the shades by like two or three fold. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you feel it under, you feel like the intensity of the intensity, right? <laughs> uh, but then you know, I'm still using a toothpaste that uh, says, you know, you're getting the whitening mm -hmm. and all this. So in my head, I'm thinking, am I. Is it, you know, is it harming? Is it, no, is it, is it really helping make my teeth white as well? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So those things actually, they actually do, the whitening toothpaste yes. and the whitening crest strips, those um, yes. actually have the same compounds that professional whitening do, gotcha. just not the same strength. But I actually, I love their crest whitening strips. Yes. I think they were great. So I use that maybe twice a year, but what I'm saying is the toothpaste that I'm mm -hmm. using also has the whitener and whatever else mm -hmm. is in there that achieves you know, brighter, whiter smile. Sure. And so I, that's why I was asking, does it really work? Yeah, I, I do. The toothpaste, but you know, you have something that expedites it's, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's so, not gonna, you know, you're, you may not see huge differences, but it does, it does over time keep your teeth white. Gotcha, okay. Uh, so why, why, 
I'm a, if I'm anybody, why do I need teeth anyways? Yeah, that's a good question. So I have a lot of people, you know, who, when you start getting cavities and you start hearing you have dental issues, I've had a lot of people say, you know, why don't you just pull all my teeth? And yeah. It's very sad to hear. Um, to give up on all your teeth. Yeah, yeah. and it's, and it's you know, I, I understand it's frustrating, but you want to keep your teeth and there's actually a lot of studies that you can look up that correlate dental health with quality quality of life, longevity of life, and happiness. Yeah. You know, for one, it has a lot to do with confidence. That's right. Um, if you keep your teeth, you know, you're, you're able to, you know, chew and eat and, you know, function a little better. Um, the issue with losing teeth as well is it can cause a lot of other health issues. Mm -hmm. So you're not able to chew your food as well, right? If you lose your teeth. That's right. Which you could get, cause damage to your gums. Yep. Yeah. Gums and mostly stomach. So if you're not able to chew food up like normal, yeah, you know your stomach your stomach gets a side effect of that. Um, so you know we always you know try to promote if you can save teeth, we we always try to do that. I've had many clients with no teeth, but they're eating the type of textured food that mm -hmm. can totally uh, damage your mouth. Yeah, it's chips. Hard. Yeah, it's hard they're, to. They're it's eating hard, hard meats that you know they're not breaking down. Mm -hmm. So you're not getting the nutritional value. Yeah, that is true. Uh, you also don't get yeah. the absorption, the correct absorption. Yeah. And uh, you know, I know uh, several speech pathologists, and they deal with people in, in voice production as mm -hmm. one of their uh, therapies. And not having teeth changes how you speak. Absolutely, yeah, it does. Because once you get dentures, it does take a little while for you to you know adapt to them and learn to learn to speak correctly again. Because your tongue is was kind of built to talk on your natural teeth. That's right. And when you get a prosthesis, it's, you know, you, gotta, you have to learn to, you, kind of, you basically have to learn to retalk. Well, that's what a denture is, like a prosthetic Correct, yeah. piece to your, to your um, mouth. mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Now, going back to dentures, mm -hmm. uh, I, th I believe a, a common thing that I hear is fit. Yes, that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. And once they get it, it's tight. It's like, uh, you know, I had a retainer mm -hmm. at one point. Always tight. <laughs> and it's easy to not to wear it for one day or two yeah. days, but it seems like that might be the problem is they'll stop wearing their denture thinking they want well, that at yeah. home, nobody's going to yeah, see sure. me, you know, uh, so I could just eat without it. Sure. You so, know, yeah. I'm, I'm not feeling up to it or I'm lazy sure. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, does it make, uh, does it, it does. Make so it even a couple of days can change all of that, yeah. but it doesn't fit and then so, it gets yeah. harder? It's a good question. So your, your, your gums can mold and remold and very quick amounts of time. So let's talk, you know, a little bit about denture care and, you know, how often you should get texts and, you know, kind of go off of that. So <clears throat> with your dentures, if you don't wear them for a week, your, your gums can remold pretty quickly because it wants to form into that denture piece, right? So you put it on and it kind of takes a form, but if you leave it out for too long, it, you, can, you may not be able to fit it correctly again. Over time, your gums and bone remodel regardless. So without teeth, your, your gums and bone resorb. So everything kind of shrinks. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, a, you know, if it's been four or five years and you're not able to wear your denture and you feel like it's loose, it may be time to go to the dentist and, you know, either have a new one or have it relined to where you can function with it again. Gotcha, wow. I didn't know you thought about that. <laughs> um, so what about like massaging your gums? Is there, like, what does that do? I've heard people talk about massaging their gums. You get your body massage, but like, yeah, sure, that is massaging good. your gums. Yeah. I mean, it sounds sounds like it'll stimulate good health. It, it does. Yeah. There is some studies that it says that like it stimulates the release of you know some prostaglandins and things that help help your gums heal. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have plaque and calculus stuck in your gums, it's not going to do a huge benefit. So you you know the only real way that it benefits you is if you have clean and healthy gums and you know gotcha. you start. now if you don't have teeth and you have plaque builds onto your gums is that uh is that removable with just your brush your toothbrush yeah so if it's brush, been building like you know if you don't have teeth and you, you still have it, you haven't been like so washing your mouth if you out. haven't washing yeah so the the biggest thing that we see is like fu fungi infections ah, um, so you need a prescription to address that yeah right? that's why you know bacteria and fungal infections that's why you know we, we want to use that washcloth and you know really make sure we get all the areas just nice and clean every night. Gotcha. I, I we're kind of covering a variety of things. Yeah, absolutely. They're that's common great. 
common yeah. for a lot of older people. Yeah, abscesses are another thing. So yes. what, what, how does an abscess <laughs> happen? So an abscess, and, and sometimes people don't know it for years, and it can get real dangerous. So a lot of dental issues are silent. So a lot of times you don't, you don't feel anything and you think you're fine and you know, abscesses can occur. Usually an abscess occurs from a cavity that gets into the nerve and then it actually infects your jawbone. Oh, so so you, don't, you may not see it. You may not see it at all. And you may have no idea, old root canal teeth that you know, feel fine, but you know, there's infection going on and it's actually eating away your bone. So mm. that's why it's so important that and a variety of other things to get checkups because you know, we can see that ahead of time with x-rays and prevent that from happening. Do more abscesses happen below the surface or because I have I, I've seen people who have it where you can see it. Sure. Yeah. So that's a pretty progressive one. Usually, usually so it originates inside and comes out. So what happens is it goes through the tooth uh -huh. and then it, your tooth is anchored in your bone, your jaw bones. So it actually either goes out the side one way or another and then it, everything gets swollen. Ah. Once it gets swollen, it is very dangerous. So if, if you notice at all, ever in your life that you're starting to get a little swollen on an area, seek you know dental help immediately. Well, let me ask you this. Okay, so you seek, it's not like going to the ER, right? Sure. You have to make an appointment. So yeah. what would somebody do uh, as a first aid to an abscess if they're at home and they have to do something immediately before the appointment? That's a good question. Yeah, that, that's a good question. That's yeah. a good question. So we, you know, I always try to get it in people within a day, no matter what. Okay. Um, even if it's just, you know, to give antibiotics, just some form of care to help the swelling go down. Um, if you're at home and you're not able to get to the dentist, you know, I would maybe put some ice on it, but definitely try to call call a dentist, see if, you know, you can do a consult with them over the phone, mm -hmm. maybe get antibiotic, but you know, it's nothing because some people say, oh, you know, it was, it was hurting for a few weeks and ended up abscessing, you know, you know getting swollen and oh, I just don't really want to deal with it. And then it, you know, it progresses Yeah. and you can actually, your airways can actually close up from infection. And, oh. you know, here's an interesting fact before Modern dentistry, dental abscesses were a top ten of cause of death. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, is it something you would drain, or is it just antibiotics that take care? Take so care no. Of so that's a good point. So antibiotics will help for a little while um, with the swelling, but the infection is in the tooth, so we have to take care of the infection, mm -hmm. whether it's taking the tooth out or doing the root canal. Ah, is that usually the the, the reason why people get root canals? Exactly. Yeah, because the the nerve got infected. Yeah. And you're saying that you may not feel anything? Yeah, you could not. Um, say, so I know, I know I wanted to make a point about this. So as we get older, a lot of changes happen. You know, we can get bumps, lumps, any, anything going on in the mouth, and we may not think about it. But Our ears get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> ears and nose. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, your tongue also gets bigger, but you, you actually can develop cancerous or non-cancerous tumors or lesions, you know, a yeah. variety of things that you may never feel until it's too late. So, you know, we always, and it's, you know, maybe something that you thought had been there for years and it actually hasn't. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's why it's so important to get checkups. And this is another one. It's a question we didn't write down, mm -hmm. but uh, a lot of older people get dry tongue. Yeah. So tell me why that's happening sure. and how that impacts the whole mouth. Sure. So a lot of dry mouth is caused by your medications. Okay. You know, a majority. So I usually with dry mouth comes dry eyes, dry skin. Um, there's biotin, which you can rinse with, it, which does help produce more saliva, which, you know, saliva helps wash out food, mm -hmm. keep your gums clean, keep your teeth clean. Has the so it's very important. Yeah, it helps enzymes that break down food. Yeah, num number of things that saliva does. Um, so I always recommend Visit your medical doctor if you're experiencing this because yeah. they can actually prescribe you something that helps bring water and saliva to your eye. I'm sorry, your mouth. Yeah. It helps your eyes produce more more uh, fluids as well. And it would be helpful if you would just drink water. I know a lot of us don't yeah, drink water. Yeah. And older people, I'm telling you, they do not like to drink water. Yeah, that's that why you true. see a lot of bladder infections. Yeah, it's so And you see the dry skin, and like you said, the dry eyes, mm -hmm. and your hair is falling out. and. Yeah. 
Water is essential to life. It is. I'm bad about drinking water. I'm a iced coffee drinker. <laughs> Me too. But I, 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 I know I need the water. Yeah. I, can, I can tell when I'm speaking and my mouth starts to feel <laughs> that, that dryness. Sure. So that's an important thing. Now, sure. with dry tongue over time, do I think you, do you start to get like, yeah, you know, like your skin, you can get like a... Oh, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like a cracks and yeah. stuff? So your gums, your gums can suffer and then mostly you actually get higher, way higher rates of cavities. In, on your teeth because food gets stuck on your teeth. Yeah. You know, we're built to where our saliva is supposed to be able to wash off the food. That's so right. if we have dry mouth and we're not drinking enough water, we're not getting the natural, you know, wash away of the food. So right. it just sits there and it... Like a dirty pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dirty pool, no. That's why I have to clean my filter, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because the tongue plays a big role. I know we talked about yes. teeth and gums and sure. it just maybe think about the tongue mm -hmm. and um, use, using your tongue to clean your teeth too. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Yeah. You, know? you notice something. Instead of waiting until you get home or when yeah, you floss, because a lot of people may think, you know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I get it later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my friend says that you should get, you, you should go to the dentist every six months. Do you, six months. Do you agree with this? Um, As a dentist? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if that's what your dentist says, if they say every six months, that's fine. Is that based on them assessing you prior to and they're saying exactly yeah, got it? So they need you know we need to see your mouth and see your your rate of you know cavities and gum disease. So I actually know people that come in for cleaning once a month. I know people that come in once every three months, once every six months, and it's you know gotcha. depending on what we're seeing and you know how often they need to come back. Okay. But if you were to give a general recommendation mm -hmm. for the average person, how often should they at least get their teeth yes. cleaned or checked? Minimum every six months. Every six yeah. months, yeah. And that gives you an opportunity to catch potential exactly. problems. That's that's more of the you know, you can keep your teeth completely clean, but we want you know we want to be able to check on everything every few months yeah. just to make sure it's healthy. Yeah, because it seems that even if you have like the scraper and the what is it, the yeah the scraper yeah. Um, to remove plaque, it's mm -hmm. just like your eyes are in your mouth. Yeah, so you exactly. can't really see it, so yeah. it's good for that professional. Exactly. You don't want any piece of plaque in yeah, your mouth. Yeah, that's true. Which is funny because I actually bought my own scaling kit. Yeah, <laughs> so I had one yeah, too. And I and I clean it and, and I you know, everything's fine, but sure. there's still stuff that I'm sure I can't see. So well plus the chances of injuring yourself is a lot higher. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've put myself in I've myself. been there, I've seen some of the blood. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Can you give an overview of how teeth work and diseases associated with the mouth? I know we've covered quite a yeah, few. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about uh, uh, the periodontal diseases. Sure. So periodontal disease is kind what of... What does periodontal mean, by the way? So periodontal is essentially the bone and the gum that surround your tooth. Okay. So I think, you know, it's hard to conceptualize. And if y'all can at home, look up a picture of the jaw. So your, your teeth actually, it's like a, tr it's like a tree. Uh -huh. So your roots are within the bone. Okay. Good and the grass is like the gums. So it covers, it covers your bone and then your tooth, you can only actually see like a, a third to a fourth of the actual tooth in you know, a normal setting because the rest of it is under your bone and gums. Oh, okay. So that's why Got you it. know, it's real hard to take out. you wanna keep it there. <laughs> yes, you wanna keep it there. That's yes. what periodontal disease is. is uh -huh. If you have food that gets stuck between your gum and tooth and it hardens, it destroys your bone levels. And so more of your tooth is exposed. Gotcha. So then it starts getting loose. Yeah, gotcha. So uh, and does this also tie into receding gum line? It does, yeah. So receding gum line, the, so it kind of, you know, your gums and bone lower and then you can see more of the tooth. So that's exactly what it is. Is there any happens. way to ever renew the tissue to grow back again? So that's, you know, that's one of my motivators to my patients is yeah. the only way to do that is where you take a, this is going to sound a little gruesome, you take a piece of your hard, hard palate, your the roof of your mouth off and you have to sew it on. And it, it wow. works, but... Do you want to go through that? You know, you might as well just keep your teeth. And now just heal itself, then your palate, right? Yeah, it'll heal itself. Yeah. It's very painful and, and it works. It works great. And what about, uh, you may not know about this part, but like stem cell, can you regenerate? There's been a lot of research on it, but we haven't gotten there. Yeah, there's, I mean, like, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of hope. There's, that's know, very specialized. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. 
you, you know, you're in a, the general clinic where yeah. you're dealing with the broad. Yeah. So we, we, have, we haven't found anything yet that can, you know, replicate teeth. They've yeah. tried with some cells, but they're not, we're not there yet. Interesting. Yeah. I was just curious about that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Caries, AKA cavities. Yeah. So cavities. What's caries? The, caries is the dental term for oh. cavities. It's a, um, the Latin fresh one. Yeah. Okay. So, so caries is, you know, the way a cavity works is, because I'm sure a lot of people don't know. Yeah, what are the steps? To yeah. Cavity? So, acid from bacteria and sugar start breaking down your teeth, little okay. by little. So, it breaks it down until it gets further into the tooth. And this is the leftover food that is just exactly sitting there that turns into this. Yeah, correct. That or, you know, acidic drinks, sweet drinks. That's right. And it, and it, and it starts eroding your teeth away. And eventually the bacteria are able to burrow into the tooth ah. and spread. And you can't, you know, once it gets to a certain point, you can't clean it. You and I can't clean it because it's too deep. So we have to go in there, take the decay out and fill it with a new filling. You can put a filling under the tooth? So we, we, so that's, that's another problem. I only know the filling like on top, but did, yeah, is sure. it possible? I just... Yeah. So that's, if you get, that's another reason to false. If you get a cavity between your teeth. Yeah. We have to take part of the top away to access it, and we have to take the side out. So you know, I, I, I think a lot of people you know think, oh, I'm just getting a filling, but you, yeah. you really are taking quite a bit of your tooth away. Wow, and you're just sawing it off, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, yes. yeah, that's... very controlled, and you know, it's the yeah, best, yeah. it's the best treatment. It's not yeah. possible access and otherwise, but yeah, I mean. If, to scare people, you are you are essentially taking well, it out. Well, just telling what the solution is. Yeah, exactly. Is. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. All right. Uh, let's see. I have limited range of movement with my hands and have trouble brushing my teeth. What mm -hmm. should I do? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, it's you know if you have Parkinson's, if you have rheumatoid arthritis, yes. If, you know a lot of people have mobility issues as we get older. Yep. So you know I say first electric toothbrush. If that's you know still not working as well, there's a there's a company called Trustin, I believe, that makes a three sided toothbrush so that you know it it tries to help as much as possible. Yeah. So it gets all the tooth at the same time because a lot of people have uh, risk like a car wash. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you know, and then the water pick as well. That's a little you know you can you don't have to be as agile with it. And you know, being a therapist, uh, one thing you could use if you have like Parkinson's or tremors or difficulty holding, uh, uh, like fine motor issues, you could put like, uh, uh, it's like the foam you use around your pipes mm -hmm. to keep it uh, insulated. You could slide your your uh, yeah, like toothbrush that. into it and it widens your grip. I like that, yeah. So you're That's able to idea. at least hold it and get, get more activity That's with the hand. But this is also great, and also the electric toothbrush that helps yeah. not only with this issue, but um, if you're a person that's brushing too hard, exactly, because yeah. it's it's controlling. And I can yeah. tell you, the electric toothbrush cleans my teeth much better oh, than, yeah, you can than I can. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm usually sanding it down, <laughs> and, and the toothbrush is taking care of another one. But exactly. I think I think my smile is okay, right? Beautiful. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> very nice. All right, so we're almost done. Uh, we did talk about the toothbrush. And we did talk about the dry mouth because that's an important thing. Uh, let's talk about um, implants. Does insurance cover that's implants? Sense. So unfortunately, insurance does not cover implants. They think that's a cosmetic thing. The insurance. Uh, it's not cosmetic, but it's not medically necessary. I it's guess. cheaper to do the dent dentures. Right? Yeah. Okay. So here's here's something. If you're you know struggling with your dentures and you know person to person, you may not get as bit of dentures just because of the way your, your bones model your yes. jaw. So you may not have as much room to put the denture. So it may be flopping around, you know, we try our best. Um, something you can do if you can afford it is to get implant dentures. Mm -hmm. So it actually acts like, it actually keeps it in. So you snap it on and it actually, you don't have to worry about it flopping around and falling out. Uh, what does it snap to? So we put implants into the jaw oh. and then we kind of, we kind of like a screw pop it in yeah uh, and it attaches to the screw correct got it so if, you know if you're if you're struggling and you're looking for an option to help your dentures feel better i would 100 percent recommend points so once they put it in can you personally pull it out and pop it back in yourself 
So there's, there's that type, and then there's actually a type where you get them fixed permanently. Uh, for, uh, forever? Yep. And as know, long as you can keep them clean. <laughs> yes. Because you still can get, you know, there's a lot of issues that you can get with that, but... But more gum problems. In exactly, the yeah. Okay. So, gum and bone, but, you know, they, it's awesome options to keep, keep your... And, and let me ask you this, implants and dentures, do they discolor too? They do not, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Then you're not. They're uh, they're set color. And Maybe that's why people aren't like taking as good of care of their dentures <laughs> because well, no, I yeah, because like, they don't see anything wrong with yeah, it. Like they'll yeah. sleep in them, they'll yeah, eat, sure. and then that's it. They yeah. don't worry about it oh, because of that yeah. mindset. That's a good point. So I wanted to say as well, you should take your dentures out every night. So you and that's, that can cause a lot of infection as well yeah. because if you have your dentures on all the time yeah your gums are just essentially getting suffocated so you need you need to aerate your gums gotcha give yeah. them like a little break from yeah. splinting right? exactly yeah <laughs> all right well i think we've uh, covered quite a bit and yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm a, full a, of, uh, a wealth of knowledge Thank and you. i think uh whether it's basic information or uh, uh new information i think we at uh, any age we'd all you know we're all benefiting sure. from this thank you uh do you have one Thanks for having me last on. pearl of wisdom you'd like to share with the audience um if anyone has you know any questions feel free to reach out to me um if you can give them my email yeah and, sure you know we'd we'll love to keep doing this and keep keep helping everyone with their oral care and just lead every day with a beautiful smile Absolutely. They don't have to be perfect teeth. Yeah. Remember, it's more than just your teeth. Yep. All right. Well, thank you. This is all very instructional. Thank you. And uh, I had a blast. like we said, Dr. Andrew Moore is a dentist. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, email greatagemovement at gmail.com or you can comment on this show in the uh, comment section and we'll get back to you. Yep. And we look forward to seeing you again, Andrew. Absolutely. Thanks thank for uh, joining us. And everybody enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next week with more home exercises. We look forward to uh, uh, taking you in with us and having a great Saturday. Take care and uh, we thank our partners, the Health Museum.